the sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming up from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. The four horns of the golden altar that is before God. And this is the cerebellum, the underside of the brain. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head. And its face were the sun, and its feet were pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little open book. And he had set his right foot upon the sea. and his left foot upon the earth. Now these other four bands of muscles coming in around the eye are the four angels at the four corners of the earth with the four winds mentioned in Revelation. But this other angel coming out of the east fits the description of this muscle exactly. The little book is the trochlea, the trochlea, a bone that holds in this muscle here. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, lifted up his hand to heaven, the hand holding the book. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which therein that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants prophets and the voice which I heard from heaven spake to me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth and I went unto the angel and said unto him give me the little book and he said unto me take it eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter and it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth, the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, the two candlesticks and the two olive trees, as you can see here. Here are the trunks of the olive trees and the tops. And here are the two candlesticks standing before the throne of God. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and of power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. What you're looking at is a cross section of a flax stalk. And you're seeing that this person is comparing the various stalks or seeming stalks around the earth. Flat mesa surfaces with columns of hexagonal beams squashed together just like the stock just like the stock 
And this is simply amazing because I believe now that we have another very specific piece to the puzzle. That these stalks that are coming up out of the earth, coated in a skin, just like the skin inside of the flax stalk. I believe that these were all hyloid canals, conduits to heaven. And this is just simply amazing because this was the missing piece of the puzzle. And I told you guys before that there were these structures around the earth, which is what you're seeing on your screen, coming up out of the ground. They look like stumps, as this YouTuber describes here. They look like stumps, except they're all cut off. Now we talked about this lens here in the eye and then when you cut right through the center, just like this, you get a cross section of a honeycomb matrix. We also talked about the different areas around the earth, the devil's post pile in mammoth and giant's causeway in Scotland and how these large hexagonal features were coming up out of the ground, confirming the cross section theory of the earth here, that this convex lens is where we live. We also told you about the dome being the firmament that this was depicted in the hunger games when Katniss shoots her arrow, her arc, with a string attached to it, the hyloid canal, into the firmament dome, which is all hexagonal. Just exactly what you're seeing on your screen on the left. And I will put a link in the description for that video that you're watching. And we understand that when you do a cross section of the rods and cones that line this inner eye here, it also looks like a hexagonal honeycomb matrix. And this is the prison, you guys. But it goes even deeper. Because you're wondering, why are they all cut off? As this gentleman is demonstrating in this video, why are all these stumps cut off? And I believe that it is because we have been cut off from heaven because we've fallen into sin. And these may have even been the conduits by which we had access to heaven before the fall of man. Jack and the Beanstalk comes to mind, a knockoff story of a giant and a conduit to the heavens. Now this is amazing because I don't think anyone's ever looked at this before you guys, but this gentleman helped me put some more of the puzzle pieces together. Now this is huge because it mimics birth. This hyloid canal is the umbilical cord. And just like the umbilical cord in the womb for the child, this hyloid canal disappears after birth. It falls away because it's only purpose in vitro or in the womb was to feed the lens and develop the lens of the fetus inside the womb. And once the fetus is born, this disappears and only a remnant is left. And some people see that as floaters. So you see, we are now seeing more pieces to the puzzle. 
and the kingdom of heaven is within. We look inside to find the answers. And that's why this Hyloe Canal is going from the outside to the inside. This is the narrow gate. This is the Red Sea. This is the wilderness. This is the flood. And over and over again, God was trying to show us the truth. And here we see the side by side that this YouTuber puts together for us that so, so effectively shows that these in fact do look like tree stumps. And on your right, you're looking at the rings of certain trees that seem to resemble the honeycomb matrix that we've been talking about. Were these conduits to heaven? Was this the fall of man? Possibly the angels at the gate guarding the garden. Was this an ancient forest of trees going to heaven? These are the questions that will become clear in the coming days as we continue to try to fight to find the truth. Why do we fight to find the truth? Why are we so relentless in our search? Because we know deep down in our heart that we've been lied to. We know we've been lied to. And we know that the truth is out there. And the controllers of this world do not want us to find it. We know who rules this realm. We know who rules this realm. And therefore we know that there are other answers and other ways for us to find the truth. If only we want it bad enough, if only we seek it. Now, what is the hyloid canal? And how does that fit in with what we're talking about? Well, I'm going to show you. This is the hyloid canal, the narrow gate. And 40 days and 40 nights was the flood. And 40 years the Israelites were in the wilderness. And 40 days Jesus was in the wilderness. And I believe this is the wilderness here. The child in the womb for 40 weeks. It all fits together, you guys. He was trying to show us the truth. The hyaluronic artery is a branch of the ophthalmic artery, which is itself a branch of the internal carotid artery. It is even calling it a branch like a tree. It is contained within the optic stalk. That's like Jack in the Beanstalk. The stalk of the eye, the branches, extend from the optic disc through the vitreous humor to the lens. The optic disc being the back here and then the lens extending through the vitreous humor through the wilderness. Usually fully regressed before birth. Its purpose is to supply nutrients to the developing lens in the growing fetus. We are born then into sin. It is cut off just like the images we're seeing around the world. And that is fascinating. During the 10th week of development in humans, the lens grows independent of the blood supply and the hyaluronic artery usually regresses. Its proximal portion remains as the central artery of the retina. The central artery of the retina through which all vision, through which all vision comes through the central artery, the retina. Regression of the hyaluronic artery leaves a clear central zone. This is the narrow gate. 
through the vitreous humor called the hyaline canal. Occasionally, the artery may not fully regress, resulting in the condition persistent hyaloid artery. More commonly, small remnants of the artery may remain. The remnant of Israel passing through the Red Sea, the remnant of mankind passing through the flood on Noah's Ark, and the remnant of God's seed, Jesus, passing through the wilderness for 40 days. Free remnants can sometimes be seen as floaters. An anterior remnant of the hyaloid artery can be seen in some people as Mittendorf's dot, a small pinpoint-like scar on the posterior surface of the lens. A posterior remnant may be seen where the artery left the optic disc and is known as Bergmeister's papilla. The Bergmeister's papilla is the remnant of the artery left on the optic disc, which looks probably a lot like this. And you can't make this up, you guys. This is the truth.
stop the incoming ships in the new world. He grabbed and they pulled, but the ships were too strong. And the sun rose and turned the trolls to stone. And they left these petrified markers as a kind of gateway between the ancient ways and the new world. Petrified markers as a kind of gateway between the ancient ways and the new world. Left these petrified markers as a kind of gateway between the ancient ways and the new world. It's like they were waiting for us to bring in everything that was clean and good and fresh. I always like that. Between the ancient ways and the new world. Left these petrified markers as a kind of gateway between the ancient ways. And this is all about the as above, so below. Two worlds colliding, passing through the veil, through other dimensions. We also see the blue bloods coming forth. As you can see, his gun is actually blue. And also, there's a quick scene here where you see that it shows Pennywise. Well, the original pennies were 100% copper which is the blue blood. Here is the Pennywise. You see the bluish fog. We've talked all about the pennies and the copper and the blue bloods. And now we're about to see this all played out in this film. Black versus white. Here you see the blue effects on the gun, the glowing blue gun, and of course, the tower now i believe that this tower represents the as above so below and i believe the these are the trees that once reached to heaven so again we're seeing this repeating pattern in all of these films and trailers we saw it in transformers the last night these these pillars going reaching into the heavens connecting two worlds we also saw it in the new star wars film we saw these trunks of trees cut off, being cut off from heaven. So I've told you guys before that the word L also means a type of pistachio tree, the terebinth. And so now we have Elba, Idris Elba. L also means God. So what is, where is all this heading? So now that we know that Elba contains the word L, which means tree. And this movie is all about a tree, basically, a tower that looks like a tree trunk. This confirms the decode that we just carried out. It confirms our beliefs that this tower isn't a tower at all. It's really a tree trunk. Undeniable at this point. So I decided to look further into Idris Elba's name. The 44-year-old who is going to be in this film. And I couldn't believe what I found because his name, Idris, means ardent lord. And is also the name of Idris, the Islamic prophet in the Quran, usually identified with Enoch in the Bible. So his name means Enoch the tree. This is unbelievable. And that's what this is all about. Now, this is shocking because what we find with Alien Covenant as film pulls directly into biblical themes. This is actually the patch from the actual movie cover poster. Journey continues, it says, 
Alien Covenant. There's the green, which is the serpent green, but what you're going to also notice are the two, the two angels here that were actually atop the Ark of the Covenant. Named Covenant, and then it's got the angels here on Earth. Now, the numbers mean everything. When you count these ley lines across this globe here, you get seven going in this direction and seven going in this direction, which gives us 77. And we are, in fact, in the Hebrew year of 5777. This all means something, and it goes very, very deep. Now, here's the patch. Let's go here. What is a covenant? Well, pulled, simply pulled up Wikipedia, and here it says right here in plain sight that there these were covenants between man and God. And there is a little bit of debate as to how many covenants there are, but it states here that there are roughly from 1 to 12. It says right here. And so what does that mean? Well, when I looked at the number in the cast, the number of people in the cast of Alien Covenant, there are 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now we have more links to biblical themes. Now this goes very deep because these biblical themes also go back to the original um, serpent seed doctrine. What originally happened in the Garden of Eden, when all of this started, there was an infection, an infection of humankind. And they actually demonstrate that here, the mixing of the seeds. This is another movie cover poster. These men are called the engineers, and they actually engineered these aliens so that they could use them as like practice, like games. And then the aliens then turned on them, went out of control. And the plot, this is where the plot of the film series Aliens actually comes from. And of course, here you see on the patch, another part of the patch is the scarab. This is the scarab beetle. Okay, now we've covered this because, and you're going to see how all this links in together. This is the patch for Wayland Industries. Uh, the, the people that are basically funding all of this outer space research. And, and this is where these humans keep running into these aliens in outer space, right? It's the scarab beetle, the wings, okay? Transforming bodies and souls is what raw deal. Beetles of the scarabidae family, the dung beetle, roll dung into a ball as food is a brood chamber in which to lay eggs that are later transformed into larvae. For these reasons, the scarab was seen as a symbol of the heavenly cycle and of the idea of rebirth and gener regeneration. The Egyptian god Kepri, Ra is the rising sun, was often depicted as a scarab beetle or as a scarab beetle-headed man. The ancient Egyptians believed that Kepri renewed the sun every day before rolling it above the horizon, then carried it through the other world after sunset, only to renew it again the next day. So now we begin to understand what this means. You see, there's the world, the sun, and actually show the heavenly bodies in here, the sun, moon, and stars, the beetle rolling it away. But what you're going to notice is that the wings of the angels, now listen carefully here, this is crazy. The wings of the angels that are shown here on the Ark of the Covenant, which was a holy covenant between God and man, are in reverse for the scarab beetle. Are you starting to understand what's going on here? Opposites. We've got the wings going out here and the wings coming in here. Now, let's continue on with this because this is pretty fascinating. But what I noticed is that the night sky, this is what it looks like at the equator. The stars move as twin opposed vortices. So this is the North Pole star. This is the South Pole star, even though I don't believe there's a pole down there. Stars rotate around. They move up in the middle vertically, and then they spin around clockwise in the Southern Hemisphere and 
counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and it makes this mirroring effect this bizarre mirroring effect that can only be explained by some kind of overhead vortices and if you go into your kitchen cabinet and you pull out some spoons and you look on one side of the spoon you'll see your reflection right side up but if you turn the spoon over you will see your reflection upside down now what does all that mean well we have two lenses and the scarabidae beetle the dung beetle seems to show us two lenses a spoon one way and a spoon the other way this was fascinating they actually show these tree stumps again they're repeating these themes you guys what is the tree stump well these are the umbilical stumps we talked about this these trees used to reach heaven and they're repeating these themes this is actually from transformers the movie they're showing us the tree stumps but basically what they're showing us is these umbilical stumps these are the actual tree trunks but left behind are the stumps and then you can see clearly that they're showing us the hexagonal matrix these stumps residual stumps that are left over all over the planet look exactly like these hexagonal patterns giants causeway in scotland we have the devil's post pile in mammoth and we have the devil's tower in wyoming they all have these hexagonal structures of rock now they're calling them basaltic rock okay columnar basalt and they're saying that it's that it's actually created by the uh, magma inside the earth and somehow they just naturally settle into these perfect hexagonal patterns and we see these stumps dotting the entire earth but then why are they showing us this and we had already discovered this before this trailer ever came out this is from transformers they're showing us the stumps again in alien here's another one from transformers they're showing these trees that used to reach all the way to heaven we're not making this up we're discovering it and then after we're discovering it they're putting it in movies or before uh or after and to me that's fascinating it's almost as if we're one step ahead of them and they can't keep up with them because their goal is to fictionalize the truth that is what they're trying to do and this doesn't happen once on this channel this happens almost every week something that we talk about later is profiled and shows up in these films okay that's simply fascinating now obviously the alien spacecraft kind of looks like the the eye model a little bit of a stretch some people have compared it to the inner structures of the brain the fornix as possible okay but I wanted to make sure I got all this across to you guys. The covenant that God made with the Israelites, comparing that directly to this, it's undeniable with the wings covering the Ark of the Covenant. There are 12 total covenants in the Bible, 12 in the cast of the film. And I did forget to mention this, that these covenants involve the cutting out. Now, this is fascinating. Okay, here it says here, this is in Wikipedia regarding covenants. And let's see, let's just do a, a search. Oops. Okay, covenants in the Bible were often sealed by severing an animal with the implication that the party who breaks the covenant will su suffer a similar fate. In Hebrew, the verb meaning to seal a covenant translates literally to cut. Okay, now what is that about? Well, what else did we see in Alien? Well, these things cut themselves out of the person after they've infected the person. They pop out of their like chest and their back and stuff like that. So that may be a clue that links those two together. Now this is all that goes back to the seeding of the planet. And in fact, in the original um trailer 
it says path to paradise begins in hell. Okay. So it's again, it's pointing back to paradise. It's pointing back to the garden of Eden. And this is all about the aliens seeding the planet. So who are the aliens? Obviously it's the devil. That's what the alien really is. And they infect people with this black goo. Okay. It's like this, it's this goo, like the canopic jars of ancient Egypt. So here's here's what I'm talking about. We've covered this in a previous video, but I want to go over it again. This all goes back to Egypt. Okay, that's what that's what aliens is about. Egypt. Now these are canopic jars. And inside, these are from ancient Egypt artifacts, are is the DNA of these ancient pharaohs. Okay. And what they do is they put the vital organs, the heart, all that stuff inside these jars, okay? They seal it up, and then this represents the DNA. Over time, those organs turn into a black goo. The same black goo that's in Prometheus. And you guys, no one's, no one's talking about this stuff, okay? No one's talking about this. Only on this channel. This is from Prometheus. Here's the same canopic jars, and inside is the black goo, just like ancient Egypt. Talk about references to ancient Egypt in the alien films. But yet it's all around. It's like everyone's asleep. So inside is this black goo. They go into the alien spacecraft. They find all these canopic jars lining inside of the spacecraft. One of them has this black goo, this goo in it, and it ends up infecting them. Just exactly what I just told you. The themes going back to the original Bible. So this is where I get confused, where people are in denial that the Bible is real. Holly, that's all Hollywood talks about. All of their themes are about the Bible. So that's pretty much the material on this, you guys. Um, again, people aren't going to find this anywhere else. Here's some more images of the canopic jars. We'll see if they've got any with the actual goo in it. Aliens represent the gods, okay, which is what this is, the false gods, all right? They also want to insinuate, what they want you to, what they want you to believe is that these gods are the real gods, okay, like the Elohim, and that they release the devil onto earth just for their own, what do you call it, pleasure and entertainment and sport. That's what they want you to believe, okay? That's what this whole theme is about. These guys released this. The devil got out of control and is roaming the galaxy and the universe and all the planets, basically using us as food. Okay. And nothing could be further from the truth. It wasn't intended that way. What was intended is that we're given a free thought. The universe are given free thought. Some choose evil, but perfect love of the father allows us all to have a choice okay and then we have to live with our consequences okay that is what's going on here but this is what i believe the tree stumps are so this is the hyaluronic canal and i believe god incorporated into our own dna and anatomy the truth about the universe the shape of it what it looks like why would he do that to give us faith and also to help us understand and point back to him as the true God. The person that created us is the person that made our bodies that also created the world. It's the only way we would have proof without actually being able to touch him and see him, right? So this is my personal belief. We've done a lot of work on this. Here's a good one. I believe we live here atop this lens, okay? And the stars are in the firmament fixed but the the spirit of god that went above the waters right as it says in the flood the spirit of god was upon the waters actually that was said in the book of genesis where the creation was happening i believe is the vortex which creates the stars spinning they're not actually spinning i think they just look like they're spinning it's the lensing effect that i told you about this is the scarab beetle remember i showed you that there was two spoons, okay? Well, look, what do we have here? We have a spoon there and a spoon here. 
So between the two of them, we get this rotation, okay, which is what I showed you on the spoons earlier in this broadcast. I know this is a little complicated, but bear with me. Imagine this is flipped on its side. If we live here. Now, as I told you, there's these tree stumps all over the earth. Now, they're not calling them tree stumps. They're calling them columnar basalt structures. They're everywhere. There's columnar basalt all over the earth. Here it is. I'm not making this up. It's all perfect hexagonal structures, just like the tree stumps in Transformers the movie. They're everywhere. Here's a really good example right here. Perfect hexagonal structures. They're saying this form naturally. They're saying this is from magma coming out of the earth. What happens and you think for yourself. You begin to uncover the truth. Then you begin to understand that there was once a garden on earth. And that garden we're now cut off from. The keywords cut off, right? So. I just showed you columnar basalt all over the earth. I also told you we probably live atop this lens. When you cut this lens in half, it's called a cross section in real life inside the eye. It has the same hexagonal matrix. It has the same hexagonal matrix, which indicates that these stumps were once dotted all over the surface of the planet and they reached to the garden and heaven. What is the garden, Casey? The garden lines the entire inside of this eye. It connects us to the stars that are in the firmament. What are you talking about, Casey? The garden is the rods, the cones, bipolar cells, and the ganglion that line this eye. They look like the fruit, which would be in a tree. They look like figs, pomegranates, and grapes. That's exactly what they look like. We've done lots of videos on this. So the tree of life, this is the hyoid canal. It is a remnant left over. Remnant left over after you're born, the artery inside of this hyaluronic canal disappears, but you see floaters and they call them remnants. That is what the, the technical medical term is. This used to be maybe the tree that reached to heaven, the tree of life that connected us to the garden. We are now cut off from the garden. We're cut off from the stars. Book of Enoch says each of us have a star in heaven, and we are connected to that star. Now you know what enter the stars means. And I didn't know, I had not the foggiest idea when I chose that name that I would discover all this years later. But you see how everything comes full circle. And here's what's amazing. Not only does you have a cross section here of this, and it makes this hexagonal honeycomb matrix that matches exactly these basalt structures all over the earth. But you also get the same when you cross-section a sliver of the rods and cones. They also show us the matrix. Now, were they originally like that? I don't think so, because a hexagon is like the hex. That's the curse. That happened after we were severed. Once we were severed, everything retracted and basically went back to a like a beast state that was the hex put upon the earth because sin entered the world right so therefore we're cut off from our star we're cut off from paradise we're cut off from the garden right and the spinning swords that blocked the way to eden talked about in the book of genesis there were two cherub with spinning swords I believe that that's the vortex, and that's why we see the star spin in the sky. Those are the two spinning swords of the cherubim blocking the way back. That's why the night sky is dark. I think originally it was probably more brilliant. You could see with a lot more resolution, but we're all cut off. And of course, we're observing all these things through our eyes, right? So there are actually three layers of the hex. I just described to you one in this wall here. When you do a cross section of the rods and cones, it looks like a honeycomb hexagonal matrix. There's also one here when you cut this lens in half, and there's one more inside the cornea. It's called the, uh, there are three layers of the hex. So that's what these tree stumps, I believe, are. This is where things get interesting.
I believe is the silver cord. It's also the umbilical cord. When this stump, this trunk of the tree goes up, it hits the retina and it branches out. So now you have a tree with fruit in it. The tree of life, I believe this was in the middle of the garden. You see how that works. This is the trunk goes up. This artery inside of here connects with the retina, which shades this like a giant umbrella. And it is a tree. That's what it is. I, I'm not making it up. That's just what it is. Now, this remnant, we've seen this over and over and over again in the biblical narrative. This remnant is Noah in the ark in the flood. There were eight left, a remnant left, the seed of God left as they passed through. Here's the ark. The lens is arced. Passed through the waters, the flood. This is all filled with water in here. It's called the vitreous humor. They were in here for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained, right? The tears of God raining down inside of this cavity. You can almost see it playing out as you follow the path, okay? Okay, and we also have, who else talked about this? David said, I shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord God is my rod and my staff. Here's the rod, here's the staff. It's the star spin in the night sky, you guys. We saw it again in the Israelites that were in the wilderness for 40 years. As after they passed through the Red Sea. Here you're looking at the Red Sea. The remnant. Israel was the remnant passing through. They had the Ark of the Covenant with them, right? Leading the way. God protecting them. We also had Jesus who fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay? The, he was the remnant. Remnant seed. He was the one seed. And he passed through his wilderness. It's all about passing through this wilderness or the void or the womb. We all have to pass through the womb. We all have to be born into this reality, born into the sin. Okay. And it's just so happens that a child is in the womb for 40 weeks. See, so do you notice all the 40s? Here's the umbilical cord. The retina is the placenta. Child is upside down. Here's the cervix, the crown. Child crowns. Child is upside down. And when the image comes into your eyes, it's upside down. It's inverted. It's a perfect analogy. There's water in here. This is the amniotic fluid. But we forget. We get amnesia. We forget, don't we? When we're born. Amniotic fluid, amnesia. There's a reason why both of those words are the same. Now for the good part, the salvation plan. So, because even though we're all born into this reality, we're born into the material realm, looking out into the material, which deceives us. God's given us a plan and that is Jesus Christ. How, Casey, what are you talking about? Well, these nerves, these optic nerves, they cross in the middle and where they cross is called the optic chiasm it is also called there is a literary structure of an outline structure when you write poems and books and things the bible actually follows the literary structure called the chiastic literary format which is the same name as the chiast optic chiasm which is the crossing of the optic nerves at the center of the brain and guess what they call the chiastic literary format it is an outline form of a b b a in other words you start telling the story and you tell it backwards well what is a b b a that is abba which also means father abba father take this cup from me you see how god loved us so much he basically shows us within our own anatomy the way back to him this is the optic chiasm. I'm going to show you the cup. 
that Jesus was talking about. This is it here, the optic chiasm view image. Here it is, the optic nerves cross in the middle. This is where Jesus was crucified. It's very near the pineal position. Remember when he was crucified, there were two thieves at his right and left sides. He turned to one thief and he said, you will be with me in paradise. Why would he say that to one thief? Because that was the thief that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here are the rooms with many mansions talked about in Revelation to those who believe. Here's the optic chiasm. Remember, this is called ABBA, literary format for writing poems. And many books of the Bible are actually written in the chiastic literary format. Why would God do that? Because he was, wants you to see, he wants you to know him on a much deeper level than we're being taught. And all this knowledge is being hidden from us because they don't want us to have a direct link to God. They don't want us to see this. But watch this. Jesus was crucified at the place of the skull. It's called Golgotha. Here we are in the skull. Here are your two thieves. Here's the cross. And I'll let that sink in for a minute. He said, cast your net to the right side. Here's your neural net. Why the right side? That is the Messiah side of your brain. People who are right brain thinkers believe in a Messiah or a savior. He said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. This is all in the Bible. Because your right is controlled by your left side. He's telling you to cut off your left brain, your scientific brain. Believe in the Messiah. You see how I could not have possibly made all that up. That is a gift of the Holy Spirit to know God better. Also, we also know that Goliath's head was buried here. Christ was crucified. So through the pathway of light coming in through your eyes, that's where we find the truth. That's where we get to know God. Now, some people will try to say, oh, well, all of this is just an analogy then. The Bible's not real. No, nothing could be further from the truth, you guys. Basically, what has happened here is there's no one in their right mind that could possibly have understood all of this physiology back when the Bible was written except God himself. So Christ is showing you the pathway back to him. He's showing you that don't look out. He says the kingdom of heaven is within. In other words, the truth about the kingdom of heaven is inside of us right here in our physiology. And that to me is spectacular and amazing. Today, we're going to talk about the stars in the heavens and the sand of the shores. Now, God said something fascinating in the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis found with the Dead Sea Scrolls dating back to 100 BC, which is over 2000 years old, long before there were telescopes and microscopes. This is what God said about the sands in the sea and the galaxies and stars of the heavens. He said that Abraham's seed, his seed would number as the sands of the sea and the stars of the sky. Let's read the verse in Genesis twenty-two seventeen. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Now it's interesting because stars and sand are again compared in the New Testament and Hebrews. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as sand, which is by the seashore, innumerable. Now I don't know who is speaking these words. Maybe this was Paul, but this is fascinating because basically they were quoting this Genesis account now let's go on why is what god said so fascinating well because when genesis was written down 
thousands more years before the oldest copy that we have of it. Nobody had a microscope and nobody had a telescope. But the one and only true God knew that the microscopic sand and telescopic galaxies are almost identical in shape and form. Let's take a look at some of these images. These are galaxies. Some of these galaxies are viewable with normal telescopes. So this isn't something that NASA is lying to us about in this instance. Because we can see some of these galaxies with our telescopes. Here are more galaxies here. This is called a barred spiral galaxy because it's got a bar across the middle of it and it spirals. Here are some images of galaxies here. And as you can see, there are a couple of different basic forms. The spiral as well as these bars or like almost looks like a stick. Okay. Those are the two basic forms of galaxies. Now there are other peculiar forms of galaxies, but one thing emerges, one truth, and that is that these spiral shapes mimic the spiral and bar shapes of microscopic sand, which is what you're looking at now. Now wrap your brain around that for a second. Before there were telescopes or microscopes, God was asserting his dominance and infinite wisdom of the things he had already created. And he basically told everyone long before he knew they would discover it, that the shapes of the sand in the below and the galaxies of the above would be the same. Now, when I first discovered this truth about three years ago, because many of you that have been on the channel, this is your second or ter third time hearing this. I was fascinated, but sadly, with the cognitive dissonance and the attack on the Bible, a lot of people write this kind of information off. So it's my job to do my diligence and give you a detailed account of this miracle in the uncovering of deeper meanings of the Bible. And this is why we have to be so thorough in our work. So another fascinating truth emerges when we look at this. And that is that this sand that is at the seashore is of course suspended in the sea, right? And if we think about the upper waters of the heavens, which God says there is water up there, the galaxies are also suspended in water, just like sand. Now, I don't believe these galaxies are as massive as NASA tells us. But think about this for a second. Moving about above us are the galaxies in the tides of the heavens, in the tide of the heavenly waters, just like the tides down here below in the sands of the sea. In other words, above is the same as below. It's a nested reality, which is everything we've been talking about, how things are within things. Now we're going to go on because there's much, much more to the show some new revelations, some new insights. Just as the sands wash against the shore, the galaxies wash against the inner firmament. And I believe everything that we're seeing up there is inside of the firmament and much closer than we're told. But because of the telescoping effect, the lens effect, everything seems like it's so much further away. It's comparable to what you'd see when you go into a planetarium. And there's this giant dome ceiling. And they project the stars onto the top of this inside of the, the firmament of these stellariums. Right? 
This is what I believe we're looking at. And so we've gone over this spiral pa pattern that's prominent, these barred patterns that are prominent. And so you begin to wonder, is this the gate? Are these gates? Is this why the enemy is so consumed with the spiral shape? Is this the gate through which he fell? And that fallen angels fall? Falling through these gates of galaxies down into the below? And they so badly want to go back through, but they cannot. When water drains, it spirals. And these are more clues about what galaxies actually might really be and the medium in which they sit. Water drains into a spiral. It's interesting because some of you I saw in the chat from Australia know that down there water drains in the opposite spiral direction than it does in the northern hemisphere and so there's something there's some force acting upon that and of course we know what science tells us but we want to prove these things for ourselves versus being told what it is that is actually going on but something changes when you cross the equator there's a reverse spiral motion of all draining water. Now I've told you about the water and that water represents gates. So now you're starting to see all this come together. This spiral in the medium of water, in the upper heavens, the water below spiraling down a toilet, for instance, or a drain. These are gates. And we also know that the elite call spirals gates as well. They use them as gates to evil, gates to hell, through unnatural acts and things like this, and abuse, MK Ultra. Now I did some research because I also told you guys that when you're born into this world, you enter through a gate. And that the actual musculature of the uterus through which every child passes is the muscus musculature is shaped in a spiral pattern we covered that on several shows it is a twisting spiral pattern in which when the child passes through the birth canal they actually are twisted out by the doctor they have to manually be twisted out or they're born twi in a twisting motion through the birth canal now this is fascinating because it confirms that something about this twisting motion is a gate remember for everything god does that is good the evil the evil one has an evil counterpart a knockoff a protege and so just because a spiral is something evil to the elite and the evil one it can be also the narrow gate back to heaven as well. And of course the gate of birth into this world, into this time prison. Now I've heard some other channels starting to talk about the time prison and that's really good because we want to get the word out. We've talked a lot about the time prison on this channel for many years. We're locked in time. We're locked in the sine wave that goes up and down and around sign is sin we are locked in sin children are born into sin we're born into the sine wave through the spiral and look at this the umbilical cord is also a helical spiral now when i discovered this the other day when i was putting together my show notes for this show i was befuddled and speechless because everything that we're finding just keeps getting confirmed over and over and over again. This is the human umbilical cord. And it spirals into the child. Here's some other images of it here. The human umbilical cord is a helical spiral. Here's a diagram of it here. Now you'll see here, 
these are arteries and a vein, right? You have two umbilical arteries and you have one umbilical vein. You also have this space filled with a substance called Wharton's jelly. And Wharton's jelly is only found in one other place in the human body. And that is inside the inner eye. So what you have is another nested reality above and below just like the sands are comparable to the galaxies we have the eyeball of a human being comparable to the womb of the woman with an exit which would becomes the iris the cervix umbilical cord which becomes the hyoid canal or the hyoid artery in the inner eye that connects the lens to the retina you have the retina, which then becomes the placenta. There's this nested reality of comparing the inner eye to the womb. You have the inverted child in the womb hanging upside down. And you have the image that comes into your eye that is inverted as well. And there are many, many, many more comparisons between the eye and the womb that are undeniable at this point. We call this the body code. The discovery that nested realities are what uncover the truth about the Most High and His creation. It proves who the one and only true God is. So now we know that this these spirals represent gates. And we know that the human umbilical cord is a helical spiral bringing us through the gate into the time prison and that brings us to another very important truth that again this is something that I just discovered a few days ago I'm gonna present it to you and then you get to decide what it all means but I believe we've stumbled onto a very deep truth that helps you understand the world we live in these are column basalt structures. Let's blow this up. This is called the Giant's Causeway. This is in Europe. And what we're told is that these column basalt structures around the world were naturally formed volcanically. But I believe there's something different going on here. Let me do a little demonstration and show you what I'm talking about. Look at the structure of this. There's your spiral arm. There is your spiral arm. There is your spiral shape this one twisting up here and around do you see the twisting motion of many of these column basalt structures around the world now I hadn't noticed this before and we've talked a lot about these column basalt structures but this is amazing they twist and they turn and if you were to extrapolate this twisting motion out into the heavens as if this was the base of a stump of a tree you would realize what you're looking at this repeated twisting motion of all these column basalt structures tightly packed hexagonal shapes perfect hexagonal shapes tightly bundled and packed into these majestic remnants of what I believe were trees gates to the heavens linking up heaven to earth 
These, I believe, were tree stumps. Now, follow me with this. There's your spiral motion over and over again. It's pretty undeniable when you really look at these column basalt structures that these are perfect hexagonal shapes spiraling up to the heavens. It's pretty obvious. And if you extrapolate this out, you can see that it is quite possible that these trees connected to the very galaxies. In other words, what if these were cut off, which is what the Book of Enoch says could have happened. It says that the angels labored at the trees. This is in Enoch 66. The angels labored at the trees. These are the words that were used in the Book of Enoch. To describe an event that happened surrounding all the trees of earth and that after they labored at the trees this was right around the time of the flood that God had to miraculously reseed the earth with different kinds of trees because the angels had labored at the trees and cut them all down and maybe when they cut them here the other half of the tree stump are the galaxies that you're seeing in the sky that once connected heaven to earth before the fall of man. Column basalt are galaxies which are umbilical cords which are birth canals which are seashells. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Now, you have to decide what all this means. I'm presenting you the information, the nested realities, the microcosms and the macrocosms of the things that I've noticed that have been gifted to me to see. But of course, the rest is up to you. Enter the stars. And what you're looking at are all of the column basalt structures around the world. How can it be that the centers of the stalks of plants look just like the cross sections of these? basalt structures around the world how can this be how can it be that this looks like this and how can it be that in the book of job job talks about a tree 
as a mountain erodes and crumbles, and as a rock is moved from its place, as water wears away the stones, and torrents wash away the soil. So you destroy a person's hope, and is talking to God about what he had just gone through. Talking about the edges of the stock being washed away, the edges of a tree. But just before he says this, Job talks about something very bizarre. Let's read Job's words. Mortals born of woman are of few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away like fleeting shadows. They do not endure. So he is talking about birth into the world of sin. Do you fix your eye on them? We're talking about the hyloid canal. Fixing his eye, the stalk of the tree, the stumps of the tree reaching back to heaven later in this passage. This is the hyloid canal connecting you to earth born in the sin, born through the womb, through the aperture, through the iris, through the cervix, dilating you into this reality. This is the womb that Job was talking about. And you're not gonna hear the truth anywhere else because the traditions of men have hidden the truth from you. They want you locked into the mindless kindergarten version of these stories, never digging deeper to find the truth. And I believe that Job was talking about exactly this. And as I read through this, you will begin to see the truth and your eyes will open as Job continues on. Will you bring them before you for judgment? Can we bring what is pure from the impure? Can we bring what is pure from the impure? No, we cannot, because you are born into sin. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. That is everything we've been talking about on this channel. Born into this reality on a certain date leaving this reality on a certain date. And Job talks all about it as he explains the eye and he explains being born from the eye. It's all here, you guys. So look away from him and let him alone till he has put in his time like a hired laborer. Time is sin. Sign, the sine wave measures time. At least there is hope for a tree. Then he starts talking about the tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again. He's talking about the stumps of the trees. And its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground. Growing old in the ground. The stumps of trees growing old in the ground. And its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground. And its stump die in the soil. Yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth shoots like a plant. The water of the vitreous humor, the waters of heaven, the well that never runs dry, the cerebrospinal fluid, the goal. Only one way to the cerebrospinal fluid of the brain and spine, and that is through the sun, the crossing of the optic nerves, the cross, Jesus Christ, at the pineal position between the two thieves, the eyes of good and evil. And I'm done arguing with people about this. This is the truth. Jesus had to die on the cross. Why? Because he was playing out the will of his father so that one, way, one day we could open the books and have the knowledge to understand that he was playing out the very creation of mankind, our anatomy, so that there would be proof, proof of God and proof of his son. 
And this is why he told Peter to get behind me, Satan, because Peter did not want Jesus to carry out his destiny. And now you know the truth. And this is mind shattering. So Job talks all about everything that we've been talking about. And I believe that he, in fact, was talking about all this. You see, my offenses will be sealed up in a bag. You will cover over my sin. Is the bag like the placenta surrounding the child? Is the bag this placenta? Child in the womb upside down with its head on the cervix, a crown, vision comes in upside down, just like the upside down child. It's inverted, born into sin upside down because sin is bad. And we go in right side up through the hyloid artery. This is it here. This begins to disappear after 40 days. It begins to disappear. Just like the 40 weeks in the womb. It's all there, you guys. Perfectly laid out for us in our anatomy. Now, let's continue on with this. And I'm glad we got Job covered because I was going to do that a different day. Here's another film. Ooh, Upside Down. We're going to cover that. Um, I'm probably going to decode this film. Someone sent this to me. Thank you for sending that to me. You guys, this has me so intrigued. And I'm going to show you something that is going to blow you away. These are all the places, or most of them. I've, I've mapped out everything but most of Europe. There may be more patterns in Europe. But I did Africa. I did India. I did Malaysia. I did... I didn't do all of Australia yet. I did not do South America. There's many in South America, but I did North America and Canada. They are complete. In a previous program, we tried to look at the coal deposits, the coal deposits of, you know, next to these stumps. Again, these are all of the stumps of columnar basalt around the world. Mapped them all out. I did a little volcano. Uh, anagram here or symbol um, because you know that's kind of a joke because were they really made from volcanoes or were they growing living things as we just showed you the centers of stalks of plants look just like these things how do two completely different processes manifest in exactly the same way they don't because they're the same process it's a growth process the outside's been stripped away now we looked at coal deposits. My problem with the coal deposits are there are many different maps showing coal deposits. So it's hard to just choose one and try to see how it relates to these stumps. Okay. I can tell you what the Bible says. It says in the Garden of Eden, there were many trees in the garden. Are these the many trees that were in the garden? And there, and then it also says that there was one tree in the center of the garden. Was this the one tree in the center of the garden, the tree of life? That goes back up to heaven. Here's my other question. Why are many of these stumps or these basalt structures named after devils and demons why why is there the devil's post pile in mammoth why is there the giant's causeway in ireland Many of these names are actually um, in other languages. And that's some research some of you can do. I'm going to pop this in the chat here. And I'm going to give you, many of you speak different languages. Some of you are from Greece. Some of you uh, maybe 
speak Japanese. And I just, you know, give this to you so that you can look at some of these names that are in other languages and see if they also mean giants or demons. Now, what would be the purpose of the devil naming all of these places after demons and devils and giants? Well, <laughs> because that's what the devil does. He's a counterfeiter. He tries to overlay his story onto God. Now, we just showed you guys in the last hangout how Jacob's ladder was probably describing one of these stumps going up to heaven, or it could have been the very tree of life itself. We are cut off from that tree because we are in sin right now. The, the tree will reconnect heaven and earth together eventually on Jesus' return. We have the Devil's Tower, of course, all named, or many of them, named after giants, named after Here's the column of the giants here, all across the world, across different cultures and languages, yet many of them have the same names of giants. This one's called Sheep Eater. That's interesting. I guess a giant could eat a sheep. This goes on. There's more. It's not just some, it's many. Here's the gray dragon's tongue. Okay. Why? Why are they naming these things after? We're here to find out. We don't trust what we're told in school. We don't trust what we're told by our pastors. We have to find for ourselves. Seek the truth for ourselves. Here's the devil's woodpile. Canada. Here's thunderstruck rock. around the world, across different cultures and languages. Why is there this common theme? Here's Samson's ribs. The ribs of a giant. Was Samson a giant? I don't know, I wasn't there. But why would they call these giant ribs? Maybe because they're made out of rock? Who knows? So, here we are, you guys all of these basalt columns around the world. And it seems as though when we apply Bible scriptures, hidden Bible gems that no one ever knew what they meant, when now all of a sudden we start applying this concept, it fits. And we're going to share another one with you guys today. And that is in Israel, north of the Sea of Galilee. And this is mind-shattering. Because there are hexagons in Israel, northeast of the Sea of Galilee. Let's back this out so you can see this. This is fascinating because a miracle took place at this location. It was one of the only miracles that seems to link the basalt columns of israel this is bethsaida this is the sea of galilee now there were there, actually there were more miracles in this area there were more miracles in this area of bethsaida but let's take a look at these column basalts of israel let's take a look here let's uh where is that at Bo -bo -bo -bum. Hexagon pool, it's called in Israel, and you can't zoom in on it, but um, hexa, hex, hexagon pool, Israel. Take a look at this. This is fascinating because the first thing I checked once we made this discovery about these, these hexagon stumps around the planet, the first thing that I checked was if there were any in Israel. And if any Bible verses seem to overlay any kind of miracles that were happening, here's hexagon, hexagon pool. I mean, look at these fascinating photos, you guys. Now, this falls in line with what Job was saying. Job was talking about water rushing through and wearing away the tree. Remember this? 
And this is this is fascinating. Look at this thing. These are the rods and cones and the grape structure we talked about on previous videos. If any of you are confused, you got to go back four or five videos, watch them all the way through. You will see that this structure looks like the rods and cones with the grapes on top. We'll just do a quick side by side for those who are feeling a little lost right now. Rods and cones, microscope. Micro, can't spell today. Sorry guys, it's been a weird week for me. I'm trying to stay focused. Here are the rods and cones. Look at this, you guys. This is the same thing. Uh, let's take a look. Here's another really good image of them. Take this image, you turn it upside down, and you have the same thing. Now, what is this? As I've been telling you guys, and everyone keeps calling me crazy, God <laughs> laid out the truth about the nature of our reality in our anatomy in our eye. This is the earth. Now, for those of you that aren't sitting down, you might want to sit down because Jesus compared sin to leavening in bread. And many of you know that when you fit the continents together, they fit together like a puzzle and that the original shape of the earth was all the continents smashed together. All the continents fit together like a puzzle piece. They were all smashed together like Pangea. It was called Pangea. It all fits together like a puzzle. Well, what happened? The cup filled up with sin. The cup of earth, the upside down cup of earth filled with sin. The leavening, the... um. What is it called when you add yeast? The yeast. It expanded with all the sin of the world, pushing the continents apart, right? And then that's the cup of sin, filling and filling and filling. And Jesus said, uh, take this cup from me, Father, Abba. Well, he took on the cup. He drank the sin of the world. Now, his cup was the optic nerves crossing. It forms a cup in your anatomy when you, from the eyes to the optic nerve crossing at the center of the brain. It's a cup. The cup flips over. That's take the cup. Give it to the Father. It, the optic pathway then reemerges from the crossing, fans outward much more brilliantly. These are the mansions his father's mansion with many rooms. Those are the back of the brain. It's all a map. Doesn't mean it's real. It's a map. It's like um, plans of an architect laying out on the table. You're not looking at the actual house. You're looking at the plans of the architect. Now, our original bodies were very different than the bodies we have now. When sin entered into the world, Eve's eyes were open. Now, this is just strictly me going on the Holy Spirit. I don't know this to be true. You must pray to the Holy Spirit to see if this is resonating with you. If it is not, do not accept it. But always let the Holy Spirit lead you into truth. Sin entered the world. Eve's eyes were open. She was looking out instead of looking in. And at that point, she was deceived. God then had to give us skins. These weren't animal skins. These were flesh suits. Our bodies changed. But in that change, he encoded the, the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation encoded right into our flesh suit, our skins. What is that plan of salvation? The cross. The eyes, the internal eye structure was then developed. He gave us physical eyes and our, we went into a material realm, a more of a material realm where we were, it was tactile, like a beast realm of, 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 of living and dying. 
being born, living, and then dying, the serpent eating its tail, the dust eating its tail. God cursed the serpent, cursed the dust, right? It's all making sense. And then, but God encoded the plan of salvation. This is why Jesus had to die because he had to do it on a cross. He had to do it exactly the way he did it. He was following instructions from his father so that we could link all this back to him and know he is the savior. We could link all this back to him and know that he is the savior. He was crucified between two thieves, the eyes of good and evil. This is why the Illuminati cover one eye. It's a big joke. They know this, but you don't. And I'm here to show it to you. They know about the thieves and the eyes. That's why they cover one eye. Now, Jesus did a miracle. It's only in one of the three Gospels. They came to Bethsaida. Where is Bethsaida? Let's see here. Here's Bethsaida. Let's take a look here. Oops. It was at the end of Jesus' journey. Jesus journeyed from Nazareth to the Sea of Galilee. He went from Nazareth to Cana to Tiberias to Magdala to Capernaum and to Bethsaida. And it just so happens that at his last stop, he showed up to the hexagon pools of Israel. And when I saw this and I found this, it simply gave me chills. This is the exact area. People, people get on me about being your, you know, you... You're going to suffer the worst judgment. You know what? If it's going to help people come to Christ, and if I get it wrong and God deems me unworthy, at least I went down helping other people find salvation. The, the enemy's out there. He's got a gauntlet of, of things to try to take us off track. I think it's pretty amazing that out of the thousands of pieces of information tens of thousands of pieces of information that you guys have sent me over the last four years that we really haven't gotten it wrong yet, have we? That's pretty amazing. That's a miracle. Because you know the enemies out there trying to feed us information, right? You know that. But the Holy Spirit leads me in all truth. And this is the place where Jesus performed the miracle a very peculiar miracle. And we're going to read about this as we look at this side by side. And we also understand that these highlands was the very location at which a miracle occurred. Let's take a look at this miracle. And I want you to think about that side by side. I just showed you as I'm reading this to you. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man. A blind man. And begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. He led him outside the village. Oops. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. They were at Bethsaida. He led him outside the village. See this? Now, for those of you that might be skeptical at this point, I got news for you. This is the Holy Land. There are no other hexagonal features throughout this entire area. The only one listed for Israel is, or anywhere in this region, is the hexagonal pools at Bethsaida, which is just exactly where Jesus performed this miracle. There's nothing even around here. There's no biblical cities. Bethsaida sits alone. It's right here. There's no other biblical cities around this. I'm just trying to put this in context for you before I continue. When he had spit on the man's eyes, 
and put his hands on him. Jesus asked, do you see anything? Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. The tree stumps of the hexagon pool in Israel. Is this where Jesus performed this miracle? And was he talking about the Alice in Wonderland syndrome? This one being in reverse, right? Because people didn't look like grasshoppers to this man. They looked like trees. They looked huge. Now, some of you came in the chat <clears throat> the other day when we were talking about this Alice in Wonderland syndrome. And some of you said, yeah, but I get the opposite where everything looks really huge. Well, maybe it goes both ways, you guys. Instead of micropsia, when the um, melatonin hits your parietal lobe and you're falling asleep and everything, your depth perception shifts, instead of micropsia where everything looks really small, maybe everything looks really big. Let's research that real quick. I don't know the answer to this. Uh, everything looks big condition. Okay, so there you go. Macropsia instead of micropsia. So we were right. So now we have two instances in the Bible where macropsia, here it is here. We have two instances in the Bible. One in the land of milk and honey, Canaan, where we looked at each other as, and we saw each other as grasshoppers. That's an Alice in Wonderland syndrome. And we have another instance now where Everything looked like trees. Everything looked huge. And they were at a tree stump coming out of the earth. The columnar basalt of Israel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's read about this. Macropsia is a neurological condition affecting human visual perception. Remember, your visual perception occurs at the parietal lobe at the back of your brain. There are receptors melatonin receptors inside your parietal lobe. For some of us, when the melatonin hits those receptors, we have experienced these episodes early on in our life where everything changes, our depth perception changes. In which objects within an affected section of the visual field appear larger than normal, causing a person to feel smaller than they actually are. Macropsia, along with its opposite condition, micropsia, can be categorized under <laughs> dysmetropsia. I think I was born to do this because I, as you know, was in the medical field. We had to learn how to pronounce these words. See how God works? It's pretty amazing. I had no idea I would discover these things, but here they are. God equips us with the tools we need for our gifting. Macropsia is related to other conditions dealing with visual perception, such as ooh, anisoconia and Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Macropsia has a wide range of causes, from prescription and illicit drugs to migraines, and rarely complex partial epilepsy into different retinal conditions, such as epiretinal membrane. I can tell you that none of these things applied to me and none of these things apply to any, many of you who had this condition because you were children and you didn't have illicit drugs. Many of you did not have migraines or epilepsy, um, retinal conditions. I have perfect 2020 visions. I do have some floaters, which is kind of interesting too, because the floaters are the remnant of your hyaloid artery after it atrophied in your eye before birth for at starting at 40 days. Remnants floating around in your vitreous humor. That's what floaters are or can be. 
there's other condi the other things that can cause floaters as well, but this is what they it can be. And they don't talk about that because they're trying to pull you off the game, right? But we're smarter than that. We're going to figure this out. Ooh, person with macropsia may have no psychiatric conditions. Okay, good. Symptoms caused chemically by drugs, such as cannabis, magic mushrooms, or cocaine, tend to dissipate after the chemical con uh, compound has been excreted from the body. You see. But you can experience this without any of these things which is what happened to me because I don't do any of those things. You guys, this is fascinating stuff. I'm shocked that more people don't want to understand these things and how it relates to the Bible. We finally have explanations for what the Bible is talking about. All right. I see Lee Stewie in the house. I see Gina. Phoenix. There's some new faces. Lone Star Medic. All right, let's keep looking at this, you guys. Let's refresh this. <clears throat> All right, let's continue on this verse. That thing's like stuck. Oh, I see. It's good now. I think we're good now. Uh-oh, do we get knocked off? All right, let's continue on with this, you guys. What else happened with Jesus? He said, did you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like tree trunks, trees walking around, not tree trunks. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Why would he tell him not to go into the village? I'm a little confused about that part but it's got to relate back into the hexagon pool. Remember, this is the eye. These are the rods and cones. So in all this that Jesus is talking about, the eyes and healing the eyes, spitting in his hands, that's pretty amazing. Now, done there, done here. Let's close some of these up. Blind man of Bethsaida. Let's read what Wikipedia has to say about this. The blind man of Bethsaida is a subject of one of the miracles of Jesus in the Gospels. It is found only in Mark 8, 22-26, which is what we just read. The exact location of Bethsaida, Bethsaida in this periscope, pericope, sorry, is subject to debate among scholars, but is likely Bethsaida Julius on the north shore of Lake Galilee, which is what we just covered. According to the Gospel of Mark, when Jesus came to Bethsaida, a town in Galilee, he was asked to heal a blind man. Jesus looked, took his patient out of town, put some spittle on his eyes, and laid hands on him. I see men like trees walking, said the man. Jesus repeated the procedure, resulting in clear and perfect eyesight. Neither go into the town, commanded Jesus, nor tell anyone in the town. Don't you think it's interesting that the retina of your eye looks like a tree? The retina of your eye looks like the tree limbs. This is the tree trunk, the conduit to heaven. We've been cut off, but as you know, there's only one way to the Father. Let's continue reading this. Neither go into the town, commanded Jesus, nor tell anyone. Even though the story is found only in Mark, it is strongly supported by the criterion of embarrassment, whatever that is, since early Christians would not have been happy that Jesus had to give two blessings to achieve a proper result. Well, now we know why Jesus' miracle seemed to fail he was trying to tell us something he wanted the man to see people as trees 
so that those of us with eyes to see in the last day would connect the dots and understand what this miracle was all about. Helping bring more to Christ through the miracle of the inner anatomy of our bodies so that there would be no question. The increase in knowledge in the last days, the faith of all of us,